No thinker has influenced the modern world more than Karl Marx. But what did he really think? I'm Paul Mason, and to mark the 200th anniversary of Karl Marx's birth, I'm going to explain some of his key ideas and why they're still relevant to us today. And the only place to start is here, Berlin, where Marx came in 1836 to study philosophy. When Marx arrived here in Berlin, there were three revolutions underway in the world. There was the Industrial Revolution, there was the struggle for democracy, which had just broken out again in France, and there was the Scientific Revolution. The job of a philosopher was to make sense of it all, and one philosopher in particular dominated people's thinking about social change. Meet Georg Hegel. Hegel said, all human history is progress towards the goal of freedom. When we campaign for human rights, or make a scientific discovery, or fight a war, that's really the mind of God trying to think its way towards freedom, said Hegel. A world spirit forcing us to act, sometimes in ways we just don't understand. Marx arrived in Berlin five years after Hegel died, and in the clubs where the left-wing students drank, they didn't believe in God. They attacked Hegel and his theory of history, and they attacked the Prussian government and the total absence of democracy and free speech. But what drives history is a good question. Marx said, let's start by taking God out of the equation. What drives history is not God, but something specific to our human nature our ability to work, and to work to a conscious plan, altering the world around us by imagining something better, communicating it through language and making it happen. That's the essence of our human nature. A lot of people today will say there's no such thing as human nature. If so, we're just a sack of bones at the mercy of our environment and our DNA and our Facebook page, with no real purpose. Marx says the purpose of human beings is to set themselves free. Humans, he says, are a species being. Now what does that mean? Well, when we make something, we're generally not making it for ourselves, but for somebody else. And if we have a great idea, what usually happens is we run off and tell somebody else about it. We exist for each other. We're a social animal. That's why we have a history. We create change. The streets of Berlin have seen a lot of history. In Marx's time, it came to barricades, and then they saw the rise of Nazism and the fall of the Berlin Wall. Marx says the source of all social conflict and the unhappiness that drives it is the fact that we build societies that stop us from cooperating and sharing because they're always based on private property and they always create power hierarchies. And here's the word Marx uses to describe the result. Alienation. We're alienated from our inner selves and estranged from each other. For Marx, alienation doesn't just mean we get depressed, we hate our jobs, or that we feel bad about the world. It means we're constantly using our creative powers in the wrong way. We make things, but the things we make, machines, states, religions, they end up controlling us. So if you want to understand Marx's theory of alienation, just take out your smartphone and ask yourself, do I control this or does it control me? That's alienation. The things we make take control of us and separate us from each other. By the time he left Berlin, Karl Marx had started a revolution in ideas, but soon he would find out what a revolution looks like for real. <laughs> 